Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Again, worship is foundation. You were created in order that you might worship God and to do so in the way that His Word outlines for us. People oftentimes speak about freedom and liberty, but they misunderstand what that freedom and liberty is about. It's a freedom and a liberty having been set free from the bondage and the influence of sin that we might submit, that we might submit to God following His instructions in order that His will is manifested. And through that, we are drawn into His presence. And there, because we experience Him, worship, real worship, anointed worship, worship in spirit and truth will take place. And as we ended up last week in our study, we saw that there were borders. And I want to begin tonight, so take out your Bible and look with me to chapter 38 in the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus chapter 38. And I want to, no pun intended, but but to tie up one matter. And that is the significance of verse 20. So again, look to that 38th chapter, the book of Exodus, and verse 20, where it says, all the pegs, and these were like large nails, pegs, that were driven into the ground for the purpose of bringing stability to the tabernacle and the tabernacle courtyard, that fence, that border, which marked it off. So we see that there are borders and there is stability. And one of the things that we should derive from that is only when we submit to the borders, the restrictions, the boundaries that God sets, only then are we going to experience the stability in our life that we're going to have that right understanding, that proper perspective, and the power and the strength to put that into action, not to be moved away. We see spiritually in this world that the enemy constantly, constantly wants to move us from where God wants us to be. And it's only when we, through worship, are positioned properly, then and only then, Are we going to be on the right foundation that God will, and here's the key, that He will uphold us? So we look here, we see that all the pegs for the tabernacle, that's that inner structure, and for the courtyard around, they were all nechoshet. Now, i like to clarify something because many times I speak not in the most clearest way, And therefore, I want to uh, uh, clarify this word, nechoshet. I thank the individual who sent me a video explaining the differences between, between copper and bronze and brass. Now, the scripture here is, is not uh, confused, but it's not, not precise. What I try to convey is In the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, we don't know the word nechoshet, what necessarily it is referring to. I am not saying that that copper, brass, and bronze are all the same thing. I'm saying that there is one Hebrew word, nechoshet, and that Hebrew word, nechoshet, it may be referring to copper, it may be referring to brass, it may be referring to bronze. In, In modern Hebrew, We take the word bronze, 
and we make bronza. That's the Hebrew. It's just because there is no other Hebrew word from the scripture. And likewise, we use another non-Hebrew word in regard to to breasts. So, nehoshe, it's not precise. It can refer perhaps to copper, perhaps to bronze, perhaps to brass. We don't know. And therefore, I simply wanted to share it has to do with one of these, but, but cannot be specific. Let's go now to verse 21. Now, verses 21 through the end of this chapter, verse 31, 21 through 31, is going to outline for us the, the inventory, the material, and precisely the gold, the silver, and the nehoshek that was used, the measurements, the weights in total. So let's begin. We read in verse 21, and these are the inventories. Now, it's literally the word for a command or a charge. It's not the same word for the commandments of God, but rather it has to do with a, a charge, an order that God has given, one to be followed for some specific purpose, some objective. So it says these are the orders, some would say the inventory for the tabernacle, the tabernacle of testimony. And this is such and you should highlight this term because we know that there's the Ark of Testimony. But here, we're speaking about in a general sense that the purpose of the tabernacle was to testify of God to his people. He would appear, his presence would come, they would have an experience with him, so it was known as the tabernacle of testimony. And it's very significant. Remember, we began our call to worship in the book of Revelation. And we see in the new Jerusalem, that final state of the kingdom of God. There is no temple. But it does speak about the tabernacle of God is with us, with men, with men and women. And therefore, it's God's revelation. That's what people were seeking, to experience him. In, in truth. So these are the inventories or the charges, the commands of the tabernacle, the tabernacle of testimony, which was, was commanded by Moses. It was the work of the Levites. And, and here, Levites, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. Because the Levites, we know, a tribe, one of the 12 tribes. And one of the leaders within the tribe of Levi, a specific, a separate family within this tribe, was Aharon, the house of Aaron. And it was from this family, Aaron's family, came the priests. So here it uses a broader description. It says it was the work of the Levites, which would include the priests. It says, Bayad Itamar, Bayad in the hand of, and this is probably saying under the authority of Itamar, who is the son of Aaron, the priest. And he was probably the ruling priest at this time. And we see here, for the sake of the work, it says, and Betzael, the son of Ori, the son of Hur, from the tribe of Judah. So in a unique way, Itamar, not Aaron his father, but Itamar is, is administering this. Now the work was done, the work of the offerings, the high priest Aaron. But for some reason specifically shows that his son was, was more responsible. He had received the task of overseeing this construction that was led by, through the instruction of Moses, but the one who did primarily most of the work was Betzael, the son of Uri, the son of Hur from the tribe of Judah. He made all which the Lord commanded Moses. So here it's very specific. He made 
all which was commanded by Moses of the Lord. Verse 23. And with him, an individual, Oholiaf, the son of Achisamach, from the tribe of Dan. Now, Judah is related to praise. Dan is related to judgment. And some have derived from this, and this is an interpretation, but it's through the praise of God that we can arrive at the right judgment, that is, the right decisions, that we have God's perspective. Worship is foundational in being able to administer God's decisions. So we have two men, Betzael from the tribe of Judah, and also Ohaliav from the tribe of Dan. And this man, Oholiav, he was a, a craftsman, he was a designer, and he was able to do the, the embroidery. And he used this tachelet, this unique blue, the royal purple argaman, and also crimson or scarlet, and this, this fabric, this linen. Verse 24. Now we're going to see that much of the work, as we've talked about the ark, the, the kaport, the covering for the ark, gold was used. Acacia wood for the ark, but the covering was pure gold, and that acacia wood for the ark was also coated with pure gold. So it says all the gold that was, was made the, for the work all that gold that was used for the work, for all the work of the holiness, for all, all the holy work. And it came about the gold was offered, and how much was it? 29 talents, seven, and 29,000, we got to get this, this right, 29 talents, three, excuse me, 730 talents shekels in the holy shekel so 29 talents 730 shekels now a talent is a large amount so we have this distinction I want to say it again this goal for the offering it says it was 29 talents and 730 shekels in the holy shekel. Verse 25. The silver that was, was uh, commanded for the, the testimony, it says here, was 100 talents. And then there was 1,775 shekels in the holy shekel. So a great amount of silver and, and gold was used. And where did this come from? Well, we know something. When the children of Israel left Egypt, the Egyptians deposited to them their wealth. Now, people will point out that there was a transfer of wealth that was true. But the purpose of this transfer was for not for us to be wealthy, but it was utilized for worship. And it simply tells us that God will provide what is required to serve him, worship him, carry out his purposes. God supplies that. So it's not a transfer of wealth where God's people are going to, to live in luxury and prosperity. That is a, a, a wrong understanding of this text. Look now to verse 26. We had the phrase beka. Beka is another word for the half shekel. It says beka to the skull. And the skull represents an individual. So a half shekel in the holy shekel. For everyone that passes through the census. This is the same word for charge or command or order. This word repeats over and over. And therefore, the name of the Torah portion that this passage is, is, is from is called Pikudeh. 
because this word repeats throughout. Look again. The beka per skull, the half shekel offering, in other words, according to the holy shekel, it measured everyone that passed through the, the census that were 20 years of age old or older. And how many were there? 603,550. This was the number of men of the children of Israel at this time. And it came about that there were a hundred talents of silver that were used to cast the, the sockets, the holy sockets. And we've spoken about those frequently, that the planks were placed in them and the sockets were in the ground in order to, to secure these pillars that, that held the, the tents, the hanging of the, the tabernacle. So it came about 100 talents of silver were used to cast for the holy sockets and the sockets for the parochet. So it makes a distinction here between two places. These, these sockets for the tabernacle and within the tabernacle, there was that all-important veil. And this veil also was attached to pillars, and therefore these pillars also had sockets. So they were of, what the scripture tells us, of silver. 100, and in total, 100 sockets and 100 talents. And that tells us that there was one talent of silver for each socket. Verse 28. Here we have 1,775. With that, he made the, the hooks for the pillars. He covered their heads and their band, and he fastened them. So all of this was, was done, this specific number, 1,775. Also, look at verse 29, and, and this Nehoshik, whether it's copper, whether it's brass, whether it's bronze, we do not know. And the offering of the Nehoshik were 70 talents and 2,400 shekels, verse 30. And he made it with it the, the sockets for the, the entrance to the tent of the meeting. And also the altar of, of Nehoshik, this bronze or copper altar. And also this, this mesh netting that was the grating, it also was copper. All which was to it, all the vessels for the Mizbeach. And we're speaking here specifically, as we did last week, having to do with that altar outside the tabernacle within the courtyard this tabernacle oftentimes the brazen altar or the burnt offering altar so he's being specific in telling us what these these silver what everything is used for now look at our last verse verse 31 and the sockets for the courtyard now remember the tabernacle was a structure. It was like a tent. Also, we see that, that the tabernacle was divided between the holy place and the most holy place, the holy of holies. What divided it? We learned it was that veil, the parochet. So that was one structure. And around it, there was like a fence. But this fence was of hangings, of, of curtains. And we learned last week that the southern side and the northern side was 100 cubics in length. And the two other sides were half that 50 cubics in length. The western one and the eastern one. And it was the eastern one that was made uniquely because it had three sections. It had one, what's called a shoulder, 
and a second shoulder, and in between, what connected these two shoulders together was the masach, that is that screen that was the gate for the entrance. So this is what we're speaking about here when it says, look again, it says, and the, the sockets for the courtyards, they also had pillars in order to hang the curtains on them in order to make this, this division, this separation between the, the courtyard and the tabernacle. Someone asked, what about the, the courtyard for, for women and the nations? Well, this was further outside. We're speaking here of the work that the priests did and where they did it. So the, the individuals, the men, the women, the nations, no one entered into that, only the priests and the Levites. So this is what it's talking about here when it mentions, look at verse 31 and the sockets of the courtyard around, and the sockets of the gate of the courtyard. That is that masach, that screen that we talked about towards the end of last week's lesson. And all, where did we begin today? We began with verse 20 talking about these pegs. And it says once more, and all the pegs of the tabernacle and all the pegs of the courtyard round about. So it includes everything, and we learn that they were made of this nechoshik, this copper or bronze or brass. Again, not that these three are the same material, but we simply do not know what the word nechoshik clearly is referring to, whether it's bronze, whether it's brass, or whether it's copper. Well, next week, and we're making this a shorter live stream because of the teaching later on in our conference. Next week, we're going to look at, once more, won't be our first look, but the book of Exodus repeats and emphasizes the garments of the priests. And there is much wisdom and revelation in these garments. So until then, may God bless you. Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. Thank you.